Hi, everyone, and welcome to our session. Uh, super excited uh, for this session, actually. You know, um, uh, myself personally and a lot of my friends have used our, our guests' product and uh, just awesome. And then my company's also invested in their round, but we'll get to all that later. So I'm Andrew Varangis. Um, I'm the VP and GM for Block Demon here in APAC. And if you haven't heard of Block Demon, you know, we're the largest institutional node and staking supplier. We have a wide variety of node protocols we support and staking services for some of the largest institutions globally. But enough about me. Today, I get to introduce Lu Lucas Shaw, the co-founder of SAFE, and uh, also he also runs the SAFE Ecosystem Foundation. Welcome, Lucas. Super excited. Thanks for making some time. It looks like it looks like you're in a nice hotel room. We'll, we'll get to that as well. <laughs> yeah, great being here with you, Andrew. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually in, in Paris right now. They have uh, amazing hotels here, it seems. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. So thanks for making some time. Um, look, before we get into Safe and you know Gnosis Safe and the rebrand and all of that, could you could you spend a minute on you know your background, you know you know what you've done and what you know what's led you and to you know co-found uh, uh, Safe and you know you know what's driven you you know I'd love to hear a bit about you and your background personally. Sure. Uh, yeah, my, my background is in business, uh, but I've kind of uh, done a couple of roles uh, as a product manager before uh, mainly in tech. And uh, for me, it's always exciting to see technology and kind of emerging technology and the, the kind of unleashed pot potential that technology has. Uh, and usually technology always goes through a process where at the beginning it's super hard to use, uh, super expensive, super kind of technical. Um, and then uh, through improvements in, in UX and infrastructure and such, uh, it becomes more accessible to more people. That's really where the, the power of technology gets gets unleashed. So that drove me into into crypto, into Web3, because I saw this as, as a fundamental technology shift uh, and a lot of unleashed pot, um, to be unleashed potential. So I want to contribute in, in some way. Uh, I joined Gnosis 2019 uh, as a product manager and took ownership of the, the Gnosis Safe project uh, and yeah, just since then, been building uh, the, the SAFE project and now have brought it to a stage where it has become uh, critical enough that it's it's being spun off, spun out of, uh, of Gnosis now. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. And congrats on the fundraise. Like, let's get into that. Like, 100 million raised, um, which is super impressive. But, you know, what I found uh, really interesting as well is the strategy. You know, it looks like you've taken a very ecosystem approach. Block Demon is super excited to be one of those participants in the round. But could you could you take it back a few steps? Talk us through the thinking for the round, why you've gone for such a structure. You know, there's nearly every single label like, you know, out there in the round, maybe and even talk us through a bit of the complexities of organizing so many institutions to participate in your success. Yeah, like, let's unpack that. Yeah. Yeah, for us, it was a goal from the beginning to really have a round with uh, the most critical ecosystem partners uh, on board. Uh, we we did underestimate the complexity a bit. Like, it led to, <laughs> like, a lot of uh, cat herding and, like, a lot of, uh, yeah, communication overhead, but uh, I think it, it was worth it. Uh, so we, we do really feel like we're building uh, an ecosystem out of the, the SAFE project, uh, which touches many components of, of the Web3 uh, community. And we want to get uh, partners on board that uh, can help us really kind of bring this ecosystem to, to thrive, which are uh, like wallet providers, which are uh, DeFi projects, which is uh, like financial institutions, banks, uh, yeah, builders, uh, industry experts, and kind of get uh, from from different perspective, different expertise on board to to yeah. After this spin off from Gnosis, to really uh, yeah uh, continue the project uh, itself. Yeah, yeah. And what what I'd love to get into is you know two part question. I'd love to just digress and talk about uh, Gnosis vision and mission number one, and and, and hear that from you. But also then coming back to the funding round, you you would have had to replay and, you know, back to your herding cats question, like you've got to like 
get your vision and mission like understood across the large ecosystem to get them on board. Mm -hmm. So clearly it's a strong mission, you know, just clearly from the logos you've gotten around, but love for you to just talk us through and unpack the vision and mission a bit. And then, you know, maybe mm -hmm. there's an anecdote or a story from the round about, you know, getting people aligned around vision and mission to get them on board you can share. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe I start with, with the anecdotes because it's, it's interesting that we, no, no single time when talking to these uh, strategic partners have to actually explain uh, what SAFE is uh, because it, it already, obviously the, the, the awareness of, of the product and, and of the technology was there, uh, but also because all the, the people that we talk to, uh, they have some uh, strategic interest in what we're doing. Uh, so that's either like infrastructure providers or wallets, I, I mentioned it before, and like they all uh, are either users or potential future partners and have been looking at what we're doing before. Uh, so that was just making things easier that we didn't have to start going back on like what we're actually doing. And uh, to do that now, though, uh, like our real goal is to uh, make every account on Web3 a smart contract based account. Uh, that's like a long term vision of also Ethereum core developers. Uh, maybe some have heard of like account, account abstraction, which, which is exactly that. Uh, because this, in the end, enables much more secure and uh, usable uh, custody solutions. Uh, so with smart contract accounts, you can implement uh, recovery mechanisms. You can have such things as multi-signature wallets. You can have different spending limits and uh, policies uh, around your account, uh, which just brings benefits to, to many different user groups from a retail user to an institutional user, enterprise, DAOs, and uh, it, it kind of goes throughout the, the, the entire Web3 ecosystem where this is uh, bringing advantages. And what we saw is that this requires uh, not just uh, like organically emerging kind of ecosystem, this really needs one party that kind of pushes this forward and, uh, and is providing education, is providing tooling, is providing support for, for this ecosystem. And we want to be this party uh, that really uh, makes this vision of, of smart contract accounts being the standard in Web3 too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, great. Great. And uh, like, like I said, I know Block Demon, you know, very much was excited, you know, when I was speaking to you and we, we joined the round as well. Um, okay, let, like, let's shift gears a bit. You know, we've been discussing and you, we've already brought it up, like the rebrand, you know, was that tied to the funding or that was just something you were going to do regardless and just walk walk us through because you know, uh, Gnosis is a, is a well-known brand, but you've gone for a rebrand already. So, just, yeah, like, let's get into that. Like, what was the thinking, you know, how's that gone? Um, yeah. Yeah, rebrands are always fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a <laughs> hundred different opinions and at the end, everyone is unhappy. Uh, but uh, the reason why we're doing it in the first place is because we, we do spin out of, of Gnosis and Gnosis does a lot of things in parallel. Uh, but what Gnosis wants to do going forward is focus on Gnosis chain. Uh, so that's a, a side chain that kind of mimics Ethereum layer one, but it's a little bit more bold in adapting innovation because Ethereum layer one has become very conservative naturally because there's a lot of assets there. Uh, so innovation is just very slow there. We want to be uh, something that just shows mm -hmm. to, uh, to Ethereum core developers also that there's still a lot of potential on Ethereum layer one and show this on, on Gnosis chain. So Gnosis, if you think of Gnosis, you should think of, of the chain uh, and not any other product. Product. Um, so for this, we had to do a rebranding just to uh, deal with this brand confusion. When someone says like I'm using Gnosis or I'm using or I'm building on Gnosis, they should really think of the chain and not uh, safe. Um, so for now, uh, we we went for just having the brand be around this this safe aspect of Gnosis safe. Uh, we we are perfectly aware that this is pretty pretty much the worst thing to do in terms of SEO <laughs> because safe is, is such a generic word. But like uh, we're techies, <laughs> that's we're, we're not branding geniuses, so that's the best we could do. But we're just going with it and then see how it goes. Uh, we think that uh, this is for now the the kind of right way to go. Yeah, right. So you know, just like let me replay that back to you. So what you're saying is when you know what you're looking for the outcome outcome here is when someone says gnosis they write right like that brand is for the chain and you've discussed you know the benefits and you know the philosophy behind the chain 
and when they think safe, right? You know, you know, we're talking about the custody solution as well. Um, you know, yeah. I yeah, like yeah, that sounds much clearer as well. And then the the branding challenges that ensue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if there's any anecdotes that you can share, like any surprises on the way on the branding journey, I think I think everybody out there would love to hear if anything comes to mind. Uh, maybe there's a couple that aren't shareable. Um, <laughs> maybe there's one or two that is. <laughs> uh, well, I think we've lost the audio. Oh yeah. Uh, back. I should be oh, back. Yep. All right. Sorry, Lucas, <laughs> yeah. we missed you for a sec. Yeah, you were saying. What I was, uh, what I was saying is uh, what's interesting is that many people actually were referring to Gnosis Safe as just Gnosis, which has made the rebranding much more complicated uh, because this was exactly what we kind of wanted to distance ourselves a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that was just something we had to consider. And then we, we kind of were stuck with Safe being the only part that we could maintain as, as part of this. Um, and we were kind of initially afraid that this is really too generic. And, and then we looked at, at the ecosystem and it, it's it's funny how many other projects also have like a generic name, uh, which uh, kind of established it, it's themselves like Near or Polygon or Avalanche being like very uh, like just English words, which, which have built up brand value. Uh, mm. Yeah, and we were trying to build the same around SAFE because also uh, SAFE is, is the feeling that you should have when using our ecosystem and using our products. It's, uh, it's also something that you can transport from just custody to other services that we might explore in, in the future. Uh, so it's also a composable brand. Um, yeah, that we're kind of thinking behind that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I think you can see the method here. So that's great to hear. Hey, let's um let's uh shift the gears again. So, like, you know, what do you tell people and about when they ask the question, like, why do you need a multi-seek kind of smart contract wallet? Like, you know, if obviously there's a lot of people that already understand the answer, but like as you're you know, back to your point on driving adoption. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you, you know, talking to those sort of people that they know crypto, they know blockchain, but maybe they're not so, you know, in the details here on, you know, uh, custody and, you know, these sorts of solutions. How, how do you explain that on the importance of a multi seed smart contract wallet? Yeah. Yeah. One of the cool things of, uh, of crypto is that you can really take ownership of your digital assets, your, your data, your identity. Uh, but the way this was done so far is by having people using wallets that have some, some private key in there and they, they back it up with a seed phrase. Uh, and that's, that's the way how, that's the key that controls their, their account. The problem that comes with that is that this private key or this seed phrase is really like a single point of failure. Uh, meaning that if, uh, if you lose the key, you don't have access to your account. If someone else gains access to the key, uh, they can run away with your assets. And the, the scary thing is that you, you at, ne at never point really know is the key already exposed or not. Uh, mm. This lingering fear of like, you don't have a chance to really know, has there already been someone knowing about the key and they just wait for the right moment to just run away with your assets. Uh, that's, that's something we want to solve. And Having a smart contract account just allows you to have, uh, first of all, multiple keys. So there's no single point of failure. You can have different keys backed up in different ways and some on the software wallet, some on the hardware wallet, some uh, stored in a, in a bank account or something like that. Uh, but also it allows you to rotate keys. Uh, so if at some point you just want to have, again, the certainty that these are fresh keys that probably weren't exposed one, two years ago, we can just replace them. Uh, your account is then controlled through the, the new keys. And this just gives another layer of, of like certain dangerous peace of mind uh, to users. Uh, but multi-sig, this multiple keys thing is, is really just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the smart contract accounts, they're really a programmable account, meaning you can run different access control programs on it, or you can define uh, different policies, spending limits, budgets, hierarchies. Uh, there's really a lot of unexplored things there. Uh, that's also the reason why we want to build up an ecosystem of different solutions that really showcase these these few.
Okay, we're back. We had a minor technical glitch there, but like just encourage everyone to stay here. The SCB folk put on a fantastic event, so bear with us. And uh, Lucas, let's use the time to kind of wrap it up, right? Um, so be keen, like, so, you know, huge traction on safe, large funding round. We, we got quickly into kind of why and some of the benefits, but you know, what is, you know, you got to put the funding round aside and, you know, get back to building, right? So what does the next 12 months look like, ideally for you, the team, the community, the community of DAOs that are, you know, so entrenched with you? What, you know, break it down for us. What does all that look like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next, uh, let's say, three months are probably going to be all about uh, making the project even more of a community project, which in our mind it really is. Um, and this means also establishing uh, decentralized governance around this shared protocol that, that so many projects are already using and uh, this ecosystem is, is depending upon. Uh, and this, this will be becoming more visible over the, the next months. And then beyond that, I guess uh, that the interesting news are coming out of all the, the partnerships that we were able to kind of establish with this funding round, such as, as Block Daemon or STB 10X, uh, the, where yeah, there's nothing I can share right now, but we brought them all on for a purpose. Uh, and uh, I hope you will see more of that in the next months. Yeah, cool. Tried to pry it out of you there. Um, a nice response. Um, well, you know, just, you know, we're all excited to see the progress that you make and how you grow your community and the ecosystem and the wider Web3 community as well. You know, it's just such an important part of the technology stack and, you know, ecosystem like that you're focused on. And uh, look, with that, I just want to thank you again for your time. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get to meet uh, in real life sooner or later. I think you're in a much better location than me with background to background comparisons. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure, Andrew. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah great. Thanks a lot. See you later, Lucas. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.